In this section, we will look at how the design decisions you make during game development can impact performance on mobile. We'll offer some tips and best practices to help you avoid common problems, and ensure the best performance for Molly GPUs. In Module 1, we introduce this quote from Peter Drucker's book, The Effective Executive. It may seem strange quoting a management consultant in a graphics optimization context, but the lesson learned is just as relevant. His observation was that companies he was asked to help were nearly always focusing their effort on incremental improvements to their existing ways of working, being efficient. Therefore, missing bigger gains that could be achieved by changing their approach, being effective. When looking at graphics optimization, the big decisions are always the most important. Target frame rate, frame buffer resolution, render pass data flow, frame triangle counts. So worry about those first. The second quote is commonly used in product design, focusing on simpler user experience over complex user interfaces, but is also equally applicable when optimizing performance. There are two ways to make something faster. One is to optimize the implementation to shave off some cycles. The second is just to remove things that don't add sufficient value. The easiest optimizations that we find are nearly always about removing work, either simply dropping effects that are too expensive for the visual benefit they give, or reducing the amount of work performed by reducing the resolution or precision. Ultimately, as graphics developers, we are the artists building great looking pictures. The principle of if it looks good, it is good applies. There is no right answer for the journey we took to get there. For optimization, this gives game developers a lot of scope to bend the rules. Using approximations is okay, provided that the results are visually appealing. And any point optimizations that are applied generally do not need to be bit exact. It can be hard to judge the visual impact of such trade-offs without actually testing the change and measuring the impact on the scene. So, graphics optimization is usually an iterative process of experimentation and try it and see. Mobile devices span a wide performance range, constrained by either the capabilities of the chipset and entry-level devices, or the thermal limitations of the form factor in high-end devices. For a game trying to span the full range of devices, with more complex visuals introduced as device capability increases, you need to plan your graphic staging to cope with an order of magnitude difference in rendering performance. Again, this can be hard to fix later, so if this level of span is in your product design goals, plan your approach to performance staging early. For most content, the biggest processing cost will be fragment processing. Mobile phones are leading the way with the availability of high resolution and high refresh rate displays. However, rendering a 1440p render at 90 frames per second is a real challenge, especially if you want complex lighting or post-processing effects for each pixel. One of the most important places to start is a realistic assessment of your target devices and your desired rendering pipeline, and then working out what resolution and frame rate options can fit your processing budget on different devices. The other related choices you will need to make are the color formats you will use for the on- and off-screen rendering. The pixel count, frame rate, and color format size all multiply together to determine the baseline memory bandwidth you will need, so beware the cubic scaling. The total can ramp up very quickly, and memory bandwidth is the most expensive resource, in terms of energy consumption, that the GPU can use. Once you know your target resolution, you can set some overall shader budgets. For each device configuration you want to target, determine the total number of shader core cycles available per second for that device, and divide that by your target resolution and frame rate. This will give you the number of shader cycles per pixel that you have to spend, a budget that must stretch to cover everything, on and off screen rendering, vertex shading, fragment shading, and so on. For this example, we can see the content budgets for an entry level device, with a two core Mali G72 GPU aiming to hit 1080p at 60 frames per second. This gives a best case budget of just 11 and a quarter cycles per pixel. In reality, you'll never hit that, so derate it to 85%, which gives a budget of just 9.5 cycles per pixel. A GPU can do a lot with just 9.5 shader cycles, so you can certainly build content that will run at a 1080p 60 frames per second on this device, but it means that you don't have much slack for inefficiency or headroom for complex effects. The second stage of budgeting is looking at your asset budgets. There are three major areas that need considering. Draw calls are one of the most expensive CPU side operations that the driver performs. To avoid high CPU power consumption or CPU side performance critical paths, our recommendation is to aim to keep the total around 500 draw calls per frame. 
This can be exceeded. Content can run on a high-end device with over a thousand draw calls a frame, and still not be CPU bound, but will incur a higher CPU power consumption due to the higher load levels. Triangles are the basic building blocks of a rasterizing renderer, but they need to be used with care. Geometry cost comes in two main areas. The memory access cost of fetching vertex data. With the typical vertex being around 32 bytes of data, their memory footprint is substantially larger than pixels and texels. Set some memory budgets for both the total number of vertices and the per vertex size. The shading costs associated with the geometry. Note that this cost is not just on the vertex side. Small triangles are more expensive to fragment shade too, due to the partial sample coverage along triangle edges. Runtime level of detail selection and other techniques are critical in 3D content for keeping triangle sizes as large as possible, which reduces both the direct vertex processing cost and the edge-related fragment processing overhead. Finally, we get on material sets, which are primarily about managing texture data for distribution and in memory. Texture storage requirements can get very large very quickly. So, appropriate choices of material count, resolution, and the use of offline compression are all important here. For runtime efficiency, you nearly always want to use mitmaps for materials for 3D objects, even if that comes with a small footprint increase. In the next video, we will introduce some ideas to help you understand how frames can be built more efficiently to make the best use of a device's resources.